Hello, I'm Dr. Shivika, MD Microbiology, and I welcome you to the third video on buzzwords for infectious diseases. I hope you have watched the previous two videos. Now, this series has been specially curated by me to help you all in your specially last minute revision, just when you're going for your exams and you want to remember the important things about the various microorganisms or the diseases that they cause. So let's dive in into the third video. So I just left a couple of things regarding GI buzzwords. So I'm just covering them up here. If we have a patient of nausea, vomiting, which may be associated with abdominal cramps and sometimes watery diarrhea, within one to eight hours of consumption of the incriminated food, we will think of staph food poisoning caused by Staphylococcus aureus or the emetic type of food poisoning caused by Bacillus cereus. Malabsorption and steatoria are associated with giardiasis caused by giardia lamblia, the grand old man of the intestines. Diarrhea or dysentery associated with flask shaped or undermined or water bottle ulcers in the cecum and the colon are seen in case of amoebiasis due to entamoeba histolytica. Let's move on to some thro sore throat buzzwords. Sore throat followed by, you know, a couple of weeks or two to three weeks after the sore throat, the child has smoky urine that is reflecting hematuria or the child has developed edema or hypertension. We will think of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, which is one of the non suppurative complications of the sore throat caused by streptococcus pyogenes. Sore throat associated with the appearance of serum heterophile antibodies, that is antibodies against sheep, horse or ox RBCs. I hope you remember the Paul Bunnell test, the monospot test. These are meant for detecting these heterophile antibodies in the serum. We are going to think of infectious mononucleosis or the kissing disease caused by Epstein-Barr virus. Sore throat associated with a grayish or a dirty white or a yellowish gray pseudomembrane around the tonsils. We will think of fossil diphtheria caused by Corine bacterium diphtheriae. Bull neck, a severe submandibular edema, is seen in case of fossil diphtheria due to Corine bacterium diphtheriae. Cuff associated with an inspiratory whoop and sometimes may be written the question as also associated with post tussive vomiting. We are going to think of pertussis caused by Bordetella pertussis. Pertussis is also called as the 100 day cuff. A young infant in respiratory distress having wheezing chest retractions. We are going to think of bronchiolitis caused by the paramyxovirus, respiratory syncytial virus. Opisthotonus, the characteristic arching of the back due to the spasm of the extensive muscles. Trismus, also called as lockjaw or risus sardonicus, a sarcastic fixed smile on the face. We are going to think of tetanus caused by Clostridium tetani. Undulant fever. That's the kind of fever as shown in the figure below. This is caused by the Brucella species. Undulant fever is also called as Gibraltar fever or the Mediterranean fever. Step ladder pattern of fever is seen in typhoid or paratyphoid due to Salmonella typhi and salmonella paratyphi respectively. Saddle back fever or a biphasic fever is characteristic of dengue virus. Break bone fever 
It's called so because of the severe arthralgias and myalgias. This is seen in dengue virus. Gaul fever or jail fever. This is caused by rickettsia provazaki and this causes epidemic typhus. The vector is body louse. You know, in olden times when prisoners used to be put together in huge numbers in the gaols, they're also called as jails. The body laws used to get transmitted from one to the other very easily. And it used to lead to epidemics of this epidemic typhus. Okay, so that's why it's called as gaul fever. Shin bone fever is caused by Bartonella quintana. We all know Bartonella quintana causes trench fever and it's also called as shin bone fever, also called as the five day fever or the quintan fever. Shin bone fever because there is a characteristic pre-tibial pain and five day fever or quintan fever because it is associated with relapses of fever after every five to six days. Query fever or Q fever is caused by Coxiella burnetii. Ictero hemorrhagic fever. It is called so because the patient characteristically manifests with jaundice, with hemorrhagic manifestations, and also are present symptoms of renal failure like hematuria, blood urea nitrogen is raised, or there may be oliguria. We are going to think of the wheels disease caused by leptospira species. Let's come to some neonatal infections, that is congenital infections. A neonate which who has skin petechiae or has chorioretinitis, we are going to think of the cytomegalic inclusion disease caused by cytomegalovirus. A neonate in whom we can see periventricular calcifications, we will also think of the cytomegalic inclusion disease caused by CMV. A neonate with hypoplastic limbs, we are going to think of the congenital or the fetal varicella syndrome caused by the varicella zoster virus. A neonate having cataracts or congenital heart disease or deafness. The congenital heart disease most often is either patent ductus arteriosus or pulmonic stenosis. We will think of the congenital rubella syndrome. A neonate with a blueberry muffin rash. Again, we are going to think of the congenital rubella syndrome. Neonate with microcephaly. The reasons could be many. These are the rubella virus, the Zika virus, cytomegalovirus, varicella zoster virus. So these are all viruses and we have one protozoa that is toxoplasma. So congenital tra rather transplacental transmission to the fetus can lead to microcephaly in all these cases. Contact with cat litter box. We are going to think of infection that can be caused by Toxoplasma condi or Toxocara cati. Toxocara cati, this causes the visceral larva migrants. You know, the ingestion of these eggs, Toxocara cati is basically the cat roundworms. And while, you know, the cleaning the cat litter box, fingers can get contaminated with the eggs of Toxocara cati and then they can cause visceral larva migrants. Contact with dog feces, this can transmit the dog tapeworm, that is Echinococcus granulosus, which causes hydrated cyst in humans and Toxocara canis. You know, it's the same, it causes visceral larva migrants, just as Toxocara cati. Ingestion of poorly cooked pork, we can think of infections like. Tinea solium, Toxoplasma gondii, and Trichinella spiralis. Ingestion of poorly cooked beef, we will think of Tinea saginata and Toxoplasma gondii. 
ingestion of poorly cooked fish can transmit clonarchus sinensis, opisthorchis species, and diphylobotrium latum. Right? So, this brings us to the end of our buzzwords in our video number. If you feel you liked something in the video, you learned something important, don't forget to press the like button. And so that keeps me motivated to do some more work for you all. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to sub press the uh, subscribe button and also press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever I post my next video to make you love microbiology. Bye-bye.